Hey guys, my name's Steve Dedane, and I bet you can't play this, and I'm not sure if I can either, so let's check it out. Alright guys, so with this lick I want to go over something different today, mostly fingerstyle playing. Um, and you can achieve this on really any type of guitar you want. Uh, it could be acoustic with steel strings, classical or arch top, uh, whatever your, uh, is your preference. Um, I think this is an important thing to go over because having a good right hand technique, even though uh, you might use a pick a lot, still will bail you out of a lot of situations and may even add uh, certain notes that you wouldn't add to your playing. Um, you'll see a lot of fusion guys um, that use this uh, type of picking, mostly hybrid picking, um, country players, chicken picking, and however you want to call it. Um, it's a very handy thing to have. Um, so if you do play with a pick, you'll hold it between your thumb, your index finger, and use your middle and ring finger. Um, but for this lick, you really want to try and use all four fingers. Um, so in general, um, from the classical side of things, the way we call the fingers are the thumb is P, Index is I, middle is M, ring finger is A. We never really use the pinky that often. Um, so you can take this bit by bit and use each of these as exercises for warm up if you want to. Um, before we get started, um, just want to let you guys know I am in standard tuning um, for this one. So the previous were in uh, down a half step, but we're in standard now. Um, and for this, it's mainly classical technique with the right hand. Um, and the theory is mostly oriented towards the gypsy jazz. We're going to be going over some two five ones uh, in the key of A, um, some passing tones, some six chords, and we'll see that in a moment. So we start this look off with uh, a couple chords that we're going to repeat throughout the, um, the whole phrase. And this is a way that you can see how we can take the same thing, um, but by reiterating it, um, we'll get something totally different and the listener would be none the wiser. So we're starting this off with the A minor 6 chord. To F diminished. A minor 9. And that same diminished chord up a minor 3rd. So by taking these four chords, um, we can play them any way we want. But to start this out, um, we're playing them um, going up and down the arpeggio. So that would be thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index. So P-I-M-A, M-I. And it sounds like this. Um, and after that, we're going to be playing around the A minor scale um, with some passing tones in there as well. That sounds like this. And we're going up the, you can think of this as a C major scale with some passing tones. A minor to A flat uh, arpeggio. And we're going to be playing similar chords again, so A minor and those diminished chords again. And again, A minor to A flat. And here we're playing a 2-5-1 in the key of A. So we have B minor 7 flat 5, E dominant 7, to A minor 6, to A minor major add 9. And we end the lick with two harmonics. So when we're listening to this, something important that I like to do uh, and to keep in mind is when we have a very dissonant chord uh, that we end the song with, it does have a cool effect. Um, if I were to fret those two notes, so the A um, and that B that I played on top of it, um, they would probably die out pretty quickly. So by adding the harmonics here, this will ring out for a very long time, and I think it's a, it's a cool effect for the listener. So the way I played those um, harmonics um, was not in the traditional sense. 
with only the left hand. It's mainly a right hand technique we can think about. So what I do is I find where the harmonic is that I want to play, and I'll put my index finger right above the fret, lightly touching the string, and my thumb is right behind it, and I'll strike it with the thumb from behind. And you can do this anywhere on the guitar. Um, and on this case, it's important too, because the ninth here is, is B. Um, and playing that harmonic is very hard on the low E string to play. So we have to approximate where the 31st fret would be, um, put our finger there, and uh, strike it with our thumb. This is going to be different for all of your guitars, depending on the scale length. But um, I'll go over slowly how it would sound. So it would be like this. So when we fret it, we can hear those chord tones in there. Uh, it'll take a little bit of practice to find where exactly that is um, when you go beyond the fretboard. But for anything on the fretboard itself, um, it's something that takes a little bit of practice. So try and get that down, um, and I think you'll, you'll get it in no time. Um, a couple other pointers before you try this, if you haven't done any fingerstyle playing before, um, is when you are playing with the right hand, um, we're not pulling up on the string. Um, our right hand is mostly stationary. We do move it slightly, but the fingers aren't pulling up, they're pulling in. So when we do this, we get a little bit fuller sound, and we get a louder sound. You can definitely hear the difference when people pull up on the string versus pulling in. So make sure your follow through is going all the way into the palm of your hand, and you're not just pulling up on the string. So if we pull up on the string, we'll get a little bit thinner sound, and we have a lot less control over what we're playing. So, in, so I see a lot of people do this where they'll pull up, so it might be like this. You don't want to pull up, you want to pull into your hand, so. You'll get a fuller sound, um, and you'll have a little bit more control over what you're playing. Um, and this applies even for when you're playing single note stuff, but also when you're arpeggiating the chords. So, not, right, you don't want the hand to move at all, so the hand's pretty stationary. So give that a try. It takes a little bit getting used to, but like I said, I, I think you guys will get this down in no time. Um, and on my right hand, I do have uh, my nails grown out um, a little bit, maybe a lot. Um, you don't necessarily need nails to play. Um, it may help for you or for your style of playing, so this is purely dependent on the type of player that you are. Um, so if you're having trouble without nails, if you do grow them a little bit, that may give you a little bit extra leverage on what you want to play. So this is a maybe a little bit different for any of you guys that aren't finger style. If you guys are finger style, this might be a piece of cake for you. Um, but uh, either way, um, give it a go. I think it'll add a lot to your playing, um, and it'll maybe open up some new doors for you as well. It has for me. So um, anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed this lick. That's it for my series with Bet You Can't Play This. And uh, if you guys have any questions, again, feel free. Leave them in the comments below. I'll get around to answering all of them. And uh, again, I'm Steve Dedane. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time.